Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to our channel. Salam everyone, what's going on? So a few days before leaving Dubai, we did an interview with Dr. Lamia from Fakih IVF Dubai. And at that time, Omaya and I jumped on Instagram and asked for you guys to send us uh, all a the questions you questions. have. Yeah, all the yeah. questions about IVF, concerns, and just general uh, infertility, infertility questions. questions. Yeah. So with that being said, we took the most asked questions and sat down with Dr. Lamia and pretty much just had her go in full detail about those questions and also our case. Yes, so we really hope that you find these videos um, informative and helpful for you guys if you're going through something similar or if you know that someone close to you is going through something similar, hopefully you can guide them to this video and just get a better understanding of infertility and IVF in general because I know it can be very overwhelming, especially when you're starting. Um, there's just a bunch of questions and you want to be guided the right direction. So we're gonna show you the clip now and if you have any other questions that you guys want our opinion on please leave it in the comment section below and we'll make sure to answer them later on inshallah hey guys so we are with dr lamia she's one of the many amazing wonderful doctors in picky ivf where we've been doing our ivf treatments so i wanted to introduce you to her and have her speak a little bit more about her background with ivf so my name is Dr. Lamia Sayer. I'm like a specialist in obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive medicine. Yeah. And yeah, I met Umayya and Muhammad like uh, in November and we started our journey yeah. last year. First question we want to ask you is, can you explain a little bit about our case when we first met? Exactly. So when uh, I uh, first met Umayya and Muhammad, they were like just really trying for three years. Yeah. And uh, despite that, they did not seem stressful. They were like very uh, friendly and just a little bit the treatment that they went through. Yeah. Like uh, they underwent before ovulation induction cycle for three times. Yeah. And they were considering uh, IUI. IUI. But just when we discuss a little bit uh, the success rate of IUI and taking a uh, little bit into account their lifestyles, traveling all the time and etc. We decided that maybe moving to IVF forward with having uh, better results and yeah. higher success rate would be more convenient and this is how our journey started. Can you explain the process that we went through? Of course, so the journey of IVF is not like so easy as it seems. So we had to see Omaya for many visits. Usually we see, we saw her the first on her second day of period. We started injection like for uh, 10 days. Yeah. The injection were daily under the skin. She had to undergo many ultrasound just to check that the follicles were growing. Yeah. And then we ended up by doing in the big day after 12 days, the retrieval procedure. Yeah. So during the retrieval procedure, everything was smooth and we had the egg collected and the embryos froze them and then we started to rest for one month before doing the transfer. Let me ask you this because this was our first time. Yes. Um, when we did the egg retrieval, we got 16 eggs out. Okay. Is that good amount? Yes, usually this is good, a very good amount. And this most probably uh, is due to your young age and okay. to a very good ovarian region. Okay. Of course, this to tell other women that every woman will have a specific number of eggs. Even if they will have less than six, eight, or ten, they can succeed. So, so the quality also matter at the number of embryo that we reach. Okay. But overall, like getting this number was a, a very good one, and this allowed us to have many embryos at the end. But having sixteen eggs doesn't necessarily mean that you have sixteen embryos, right? Of course not. So Yes. That means like within days of like testing, exactly. most of them die down. Exactly. This is a very important thing yeah. to tell. So when you collect 16 eggs, we have to see after how many are mature, yeah. how many will fertilize. Yeah. And then let's say that 80% will be mature and 80% will fertilize. So we'll end up by having, for example, 12 embryos. We have to uh, let these embryos go to the day five. Okay. And then only the strong embryo that will reach day five will be eligible for a biopsy or a genetic test. And this is why, for example, from these 12 embryos, we ended up by having, for example, eight or six or yeah. five at the end. Yeah, at the end we had five. Exactly. So you, you go from 16 to all the way to five and you're like, wait, what happened yeah. to the rest? Exactly. But it's normal, Exactly. Right? And this is what uh, happens that when you call your patient, as yeah. a doctor, you are satisfied with the result, but yeah. the patient is couple are always like asking yeah it was why? so sad yeah, like, exactly. what <laughs> but yeah. she was like no it's normal and you like on day five come just when the couple will decide if you want to do a genetic testing of this embryo yes yeah. or not 
The genetic testing of the embryo is important just to check that the, this embryo don't, does not have any chromosomal abnormality. Okay. And usually uh, it's indicated in some cases, okay. uh, medical indication, like if the patient is like more than 35 or we have a very, uh, a very low sperm count. Uh -huh. But some couple will choose to make it even if we don't have any of these conditions, just yeah. because they want to be sure that they are transferring a healthy haploid embryo. And that's what we did. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what you so, would recommend anyways, right? Exactly. Because going to yeah. you after to do the, all the prenatal testing related to chromosomes yeah. when you are already pregnant. Yeah, yeah. Correct. So the next question is how common is it to have many rounds of IVF? It is common. And usually, like, we explain to the patient that if a regular IVF success rate is about 35%, mm -hmm. like, the patient would most probably have to undergo three trials, 35, 35, 35, wow. to reach, like, the 100%. Yeah. Wow. And this is a little bit difficult to understand because the patient will think that we want just to embark on a difficult journey or that maybe it's like due to financial reason. But honestly, if we take the success rate overall, usually we need like more than one round. Yeah. So technically, let's go back to your case, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had frozen embryo, and then we decided to do the uh, transfer back, yeah. the frozen transfer. And then the first transfer was done in May, and we were so excited about yeah. it. We had to, to have many uh, medication, estrogen tablet, to go through like many injections. Yeah. And this is a little bit compromising because the patient will have uh, like uh, hormonal imbalances. She can feel a little bit bloated, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. having to be nauseous sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. usually, like, yeah. and usually she needs like uh, a lot of support. And yeah. this was done very well by her sister <laughs> and, her <mom laughs> and by uh, everyone here. So basically, we ended up by having the transfer, and we had a first positive result, and we were so optimistic about it. And then suddenly, the second reading was down. And yeah. this is where I had to inform Maya that we have a chemical pregnancy, that this happens, and we were a little bit disappointed at this stage. Yeah. However, when I had the discussion with Umayya, I was telling her that it's okay, she can rest for two, three months, and me and Muhammad were, were discussing that she should like most probably take a vacation. She liked... <laughs> 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 she went to a small vacation, she probably will tell you where <laughs> and what she did during that time. And then she came back in June and she told me I want to do a second transfer. And I was re reluctant a bit, a yeah. bit because I did not want to run a second failure. And then if I have a second failure, this would be so disappointing. Yeah. But she was like so optimistic. She had like so positive vibes <laughs> to the extent that it was the first time that the patient really pushed me correctly yeah. to do the transfer. <laughs> she was so hesitant. She yes. was like, are you sure? Oh, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> and, then, uh, yeah. Yeah. and then we uh, just went ahead and we like uh, took again medication and etc. We did not took shit. <laughs> <laughs> All the medications. And then, uh, yeah, and then we ended up by having a, uh, like a positive result, but as one a real positive, <laughs> followed by an intrinsic sac and a positive result. Yes, Alhamdulillah. And then just to ask off of the IVF, a lot of people think it's a fast process. Yes. It's, is it a fast it process? Is not. If we go back to your journey, yeah. And for me, it was a fast journey, yeah. in brackets. It started in November, yeah. and now we are in June. Yeah. So it's not fast, yeah. yeah? And it's also like a little bit stressful. It stressed the family, it stressed everyone. Yeah. But we usually have good results. Okay. Yeah. We are in an era to say that IVF has evolved a lot. Yes. Yes. And then uh, basically, most of the couple, in a way or another, will be able to achieve motherhood. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Inshallah, we all get Inshallah. that chance. Inshallah. How long should a couple wait after naturally trying to conceive? Uh, to start an IVF or IUI uh, process. Yes. So basically, usually we'll tell the couple that to wait one year before uh, uh, consulting any doctor. Okay. Okay. If the patient, if the woman is more than 35, they usually have to wait six months. So six yeah. months or, or one year, depending on the age of the woman. Yeah. But basically, the first step is to come, tell their story, and then we have to do some baseline tests, like a sperm yeah. analysis for the husband. This yeah. is what, uh, what we start doing yeah. first. And then some baseline hormonal test for the woman, like her thyroid to be checked, prolactin level, an ultrasound for her uterus, the tubes, okay. and everything was already done by yourself when you came for the first yes. visit yeah. because you were seeing before yes. doctors also. So basically, this is the first step, okay. and then according to the result of these tests, we'll decide if we want to proceed to IUI or IVF. To make it simpler, IUI procedure is like done if the patients have a mild problem in the sperm analysis, okay. but if it's more like related to woman problems uh, like concerning tube, low ovary reserve, 
uh, we got endometriosis. endometriosis. Yeah. We have a little bit to go uh, through the IVF IBS process. process. Yes. Because it's higher chances of conceiving. higher chances, and it's like we are uh, uh, we are putting the sperm directly inside the egg. Okay. So it's like uh, we are having an embryo made in our laboratory and then put in your uterus. And okay. IUI, no, this is the sperm that you are putting in the uterus and you have just to swim and fertilize the egg by itself. Pretty much it's more natural than IVF, right? Uh, yes. IUI is, IUI more, is more natural. IUI is more natural, 100%, but the success rate of IUI is between 15 and 20%. 15 and I, to 20%, yes. wow. In IVF, if we are having uh, like a patient that is around 30 year old, most probably the success rate will be around 45%. Wow. And if we do genetics on embryos and we have, we are sure that we have a blast that is occluded, usually the success rate can be around 65%. Wow. wow. So this one is a question that I really wanted to know from the beginning yes. uh, because I was very hesitant on it. So how many embryos would you recommend putting in for a successful IVF? Yeah. So let me tell you something. Usually the gold standard is just to transfer one embryo because so one. if you are really sure, yes, yeah. if you are really sure of your embryo, it's yeah. a competent one, it's a blastocyst, you prepare the lining well, uh, just if you want to be sure that your patient most probably will deliver safely at her nine months and will not have complication like preterm labor, like gestation diabetes, like gestation hypertension, you have to go one, one, one. one. Most of the countries now are putting like rules that it's not allowed to transfer uh, more than one embryo. And this is called single embryo transfer because okay. they want to, to avoid all the complication related to twins and triplets pregnancy. So despite twins can, uh, can seem attractive, attractive, like can have more photos and it looks like yeah, really yeah. very pretty on television yeah. and etc. Then you feel like, work. yes, it's a lot of uh, work. It's a lot of risk and it's really like uh, will be very heavy on the patient like health and okay. course in pregnancy. Okay, but it's, I feel like um, a lot of doctors just going with two, yeah. hoping that at least uh, maybe one of them makes it, right? Yeah. We were thinking like that when we were doing a transfer on day three of the embryos yeah. and when genetics were not available. But now with the technology, since okay. we are sure that this embryo reached day five okay. and it has a very good uh, chance of implantation, so let me tell you something. If okay. you put now a ploid or blastocyst embryo, if you put one, the success rate of having a pregnancy is around 65%. Wow. If you put two, it's 70%. So you are putting an additional one only to increase 5%. So this is not worth it. Okay. To also like, because you are losing one embryo also when yeah. you are putting the second. So no, it's better to just put one, be sure of it, and then just to uh, to have another round maybe yeah. in one or two years. One at a time. Do you want to come back? Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to come back. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, well. it was truly like fate that we came, we found the, the, the center. The found you. Like we Googled uh, like IVF centers around us, and alhamdulillah, like it came up and we called and they said, we can meet with you the same day. It was just... It was all meant to be, so come to that we're like we're happy so that happy. we were able to meet you. I think that yeah. uh, my self flexibility for yeah. a couple that is like uh, really wants children is primordial, yeah? yeah. Because if you are not flexible and able just to always like be there, yes, it's, yeah. it's not worth it to do in that center. So yeah, yeah we should, you should most probably have someone that is flexible and able just to to be with you at any time. Yeah. yeah well, thank you so much yeah. for your time and thank that you for so everything. Yeah. We're so appreciative <laughs> uh, for you taking your time to answer these very important questions. Thank you. Thank you.